Uh, so every Tuesday, we are joined in the early segments by Basil Chapman. Now, Basil Chapman is the author of the opening call newsletter. Go ahead and check that out. And of course, he hosts his own show at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, the Tiger Technicians Hour, right here on Tiger Financial News Network. Now, what I want to say about the opening call is not only do you get really fantastic kind of insight uh, into what Basil's looking at, uh, but you also get access to all these really fantastic lecture webinars. The most recent one he did was July 23rd. That is uh, sectors and stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market cycle. Of course, when he's been coming on, he's been uh, giving us some some pretty good nuggets of information. So I recommend going ahead and checking that out. If it is your first time, I wanna tell you, we have a 30 day money back guarantee on all of our newsletters so you can try this out risk free and for whatever reason it doesn't work for you, you can get your money back, but we're betting that it is going to. I believe right now we are joined by Basil Chapman. Basil. Yes, we are. Hi, Jacob, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Well, what are we taking a look at today? I'm honestly surprised the market is yeah, it's kind of like picked up. At least looking at the E-mini, I mean, we had some nice movement to the upside today, even with kind of this uncertainty that's going on with the presidential election. Um, so it's nice to kind of see some stuff. I'm, I'm wondering what you're looking at today. So there are a couple of things that are going on. But the most important is if we look at the, I've got the chart of the Dow on the left. So There's a daily chart right here. There it is. In the middle is the weekly chart. And on the right is the monthly chart. Mm -hmm. And what's the most important thing as far as I'm concerned is this middle chart. <clears throat> I have a technique that I use is using the nine period moving average. If it's over the 14 period moving average, it turns green. <clears throat> and very positive. If it's under the 14 period moving average, this black line here, it goes it goes pink. Okay. So, and just to, uh, just to show you what I'm talking about, it works in every time frame. Look, here's the uh, here's the five minute chart of the E mini. It went positive at uh, 9:30 this morning, 9:35. It went green. It doesn't even matter about the Chapman Wave counts. It went to a peak D, pulls back, holds the nine period moving average. They went to a peak F. Um, the six highest peak and pull back. And you can see that green line kept you in the trade all the way until it went pink. But the 10-minute chart, so this is how I use daily, weekly, monthly charts. Mm -hmm. You can imagine that this one-minute chart on the left is the daily. In the middle is the five-minute. We call that the weekly. And on the right, you can call that the monthly, although it's a 10-minute chart. But price doesn't know what it is. It just moves up and down. But look, the nine-period moving average in the 10-minute chart is still green, and even with that sharp pullback that we had at about uh, noon at 12.30 or so, it's still green as we're speaking right now. So using that same formula, using it, making it as simple as possible, you've still got a green nine-period moving average in the weekly chart of the Dow. Let's just keep it for the moment to this middle chart because we finished the monthly chart. We went to a leg E. It's still holding quite nicely. The nine period in the month chart is still very strong. The, the MACD is strong. The stochastics at 93%. That's fabulous. On balance volume was a little bit of the blue line is overbought and pulled back a little bit. But look, you can see that in the S&P. Let's go to the, the middle chart, which is the weekly chart of the S&P. The nine period moving average is still holding very well. And the monthly chart. Look at the QQQ. The a nine period moving average making a little bit of a double top. We went to 503.32 in the QQQ uh, back in July, pulled back very sharply, came all the way back. And where did it go to? 501.35, three cents away from that, uh, sorry, two dollars and three cents away from that previous high. So that's how I like to look at these things. Uh, even the SMHs and the SMHs have been under quite a bit of pressure um, since the July, mid-July high of 283, pulls back sharply and rallies. That the daily chart has gone to a sell mode, but the weekly chart is still holding the green period nine nine moving average. So I just wanted to go through that to say, using it kind of a core technique, and I have webinars and I discuss this all the time. I do that in my show as well. Uh, that is very important. So when we come back, I'll I'll go through where I think we are and what to look for in the uh, in a few days ahead because by Friday's close, it's going to be very important. Fantastic. Yeah, Basil, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Basil Chap. Basil 
Chapman, the author of the opening call newsletter. Uh, Basil, let's continue. What, let's go. So I should just first of all say that we've been along the Dow um, um, for a very long time. We've been long. Even the last position that we took was back in 2023, uh, 2022 in October. And we're still holding that position. We actually also have three times long the Dow. It's not a position you're supposed to have technically, but we, we've had it just kind of almost for fun. It's done very nicely. And we didn't go short when the Dow gave this top right here because I was thinking that the uh, weekly chart was still acting so well <laughs> that it might just be a shorter term uh, situation. So let's let's just for the moment exclude the election because anything could still happen. So I'm just right. saying at this particular moment, the Dow is up. Uh, 363. It was really important that it did have a rally at this particular point because the stochastic went under 20% and started turning around, but the other technical indicators are weak in the daily chart, and it's going to take a lot. It'll take a move to about 42,000. It's at 42,155. It'll take a move to about 42,500 to really start to see them get back into sync on the upside. And if the Dow cracks 41,500, regardless, election or no election, whatever it is, if the price goes under, closes under 41,500, 41, that's going to be detrimental to the chart pattern and you've got to be careful. Right. And that could start to affect the, the weekly chart, but it'll have to go even lower than that. It'll probably have to go to 41,000 for the weekly chart to go to a sell signal and then a sell mode. So, so far, that's all positive. <clears throat> but within the whole a uh, spectrum of the market. One of the things we've been looking for is there was a relationship of the XLF, that's the deep, that's the money center banks, and they've been doing fantastic. They went to all time. It went to the SL, the S, the XLF went to an all time high about three weeks ago to 47.81. It's trading at 46.53. But my, my, I like to look at the market in terms of relationships. So the relationship of the S&P 500 and the relationship of the XLF, I kind of put them together. I want them both to be moving to the upside in, in synchronicity. But then I want to see the small caps, the two, Russell 2000, which is the IWM, moving to try to play catch up, just like gold and silver play catch up with one another every once in a while. I wanted to see the same thing. And the relationship there is that if the IWM, the small caps, the 2000, and we are along the, the small caps from the, uh, from the most recent low, and that was in August. Um, if the small caps can actually garner some rotational strength It'll allow for some of the really big caps like the Microsofts, maybe even NVIDIA, take take a bit of a breather. And then I want to see the relationship of the small caps and the S&P 500, almost the same as the XLF and the KRE, which is the okay. regional banks. Yep. So if I can see the synchronicity between the small the basic, I wouldn't even call them small caps in the regional banks because some of them are, are multi-billions. But let's just say... The, the regional banks, and it's really important for regional banks to do well. That's the general economy. I mean, that's where you garner that momentum building up the economy by having the regional banks do well. So if, if the KRE trading at 58.78 can retest its most recent high in the 61s over the next week or two, I think that'll be very good. And that'll allow for some kind of a rotation and that maybe could see the semiconductors still not leading and taking a breather, but right. it allows the market to rotate so that prices are still moving higher, even though other areas are digesting gains. To me, that's important. That's different to when you get a sell signal <clears throat> and everything comes down together. I like the rotational aspect. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully with, you know, if we stay on this kind of, uh, you know, interest rate point cut schedule, you know, definitely you can see some light coming into the Russell. Of course, the banks can start lending a little bit more as well. And uh, so it'll be fantastic to kind of see that happening. Basil, are you looking at any uh, specific equities, equities today? I know you usually talk about hood, maybe even things within uranium. I know sometimes you look at ETS. I'm yes. just curious so, if you got uh, anything with, on that. Within the sector, excuse me. Yeah. I don't know why I suddenly going to take a drink of water. <laughs>
You have the allergies here. That's what's doing it to me in the morning. So <laughs> no, it's terrible. Me, it's just, you know, I used to do three days in a row of webinars with TFNL <laughs> from about eight in the morning until four in the afternoon, three days in a row. Oh, I think man. I've paid a penalty for that. So, yeah, we, <laughs> <I hear you. laughs> so we'll see if the voice lasts. But in the meantime, <clears throat> you know, I, I, we don't have this at the moment. But uh -huh. if you look at some of the stocks that were really beaten down, that did fantastic, like Zoom. Okay. Zoom was a stock that went up into the 400s. That was, it was actually <laughs> almost just under 600. So Zoom technology and then video communications. And then it just, that was a video that was prime in the, in the, uh, the, during the COVID period. And then it just, I mean, take a dive. It didn't just take a dive. It went down to 55. Yeah. I mean, that's unbelievable. And you can see the monthly chart, nothing to see. It's just a, like a flat line. But if you look at the weekly chart, it's already started to improve a lot. In fact, I almost had it as a buy this morning. And then I thought, you know, uh, we've got one buy that we put back on. I, I don't want to I don't wanna get too aggressive here. But look at this beautiful cup shape formation. And I had this as a, what I call a left side, right side price time match at 75.91. The height was made back a year ago, back in September. Um and it plummets down to 55.96. And now more aggressively, yeah. it's almost like a Chapman Wave cup and ladle breakout pattern. It's at 77.27. So we didn't have it. But on the next pullback, I'm going to seriously look at it. So when you say looking at, uh, when I'm talking about this rotation, this is typical of what I'm talking about, that if you can see stocks like an, a major leader like an NVIDIA take a breather, doesn't have to collapse, but just take a breather and it is going to go into the Dow when Intel comes out. You can see other stocks, and there are many of these stocks that were, I mean, CRM is uh, Salesforce. I, we don't have this, but look, at, look how well it's yeah. done since that major top that was made. Um, it's trading at 297, down 74 cents. But back in 2021, it was up in the three, three, just under 320, plummets to 126. It's more than cut in half, and now it's coming back. So that's why I think, so for my newsletter, we, we've got a list of stocks that we're waiting for. Uh, any, any sudden sharp pullback to be able to look at the ones that were leaders, became real failures, and now are back in the leading uh, saddle again. So I think there are quite a few, and I, I'm looking forward to any kind of pullback that we get over the next week or two. Fantastic. Well, Basil, it sounds like we might need a uh, new subscriber webinar at some point. We'll have to talk a little bit deeper on that, but it's some interesting like shifting. And I hear what you're saying with the semiconductors kind of taking a breath and other people coming back in. Uh, it definitely makes some sense. So, it's the rotation. Very important in market bull markets. Yes. Fantastic. Well, Basil, um, thank you so much. It's always fantastic having you on. Um, I guess we're going to see you tomorrow morning, right? 10 a.m. Eastern time for the 10 a.m. Uh, 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 absolutely. Well, Basil, thank, thank you, you so much. We'll see you then. Thank you. Yeah, and guys, seriously, I mean, that analysis is great. You can see me at 10 a.m. Eastern time. It's fantastic. Traders, uh, excuse me, the uh, Tiger Technicians Hour. And really, check out this newsletter. It's an opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. He also does um, some kind of market roundups at the end of the week. It's just really a solid deal, especially when you get access to those subscriber-only webinars. Folks, you stay right there. We're going to be right back with Tim Orr.